All right, if you have your Bibles, then we'd ask you to turn to 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter number 6, and we're going to begin reading in verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, and we're going to begin reading in verse 17. The Bible says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, who have given us the, the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them who have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now, we are ambassadors for Christ as though, uh, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. For he, for he had made... For he hath made to him be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your precious word tonight, Lord. We thank you uh, uh, for being faithful to it down through the years, God, that uh, you stand with it when everything else seems to be crumbling away at our feet, God. We praise you for that. God, we thank you and praise you for those that are here tonight, Lord, that we would be here under the direction of uh, the Holy Spirit, Lord, that you would be the leader and that you would be the middle of all things and what is said and done tonight. We pray for those that are not able to be here. In Christ's name we do pray. Amen. So uh, maybe not so much familiar verses of Scripture. Uh, I've never really preached on this myself that I can remember and I uh, only heard one other pa person uh, maybe two preach on this but our real focus and we're going to look at reconciliation because it's very and, and very important we understand that but our real focus tonight is going to be found in the uh, middle of verse 21 speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ he's described who knew no sin. Now, uh, that's a very amazing thing to me. Uh, even I can't get my mind around it not to be, uh, not, to be knowledgeable of sin. Now, uh, certainly I guess he knew it existed because he's an all-knowing creature and he knew it was there. Uh, we know God the Father was uh, disgusted by it and, and his only answer, God Jehovah's only answer is death and to be thr thrown uh, far from him. But I believe when Christ was in Gethsemane, he began to understand. He did, <laughs> he did not want, it wasn't death that he was worried about. It was the knowledge of sin as it's being laid on him. Now, you think about yourself, there's never been a time in your life that you never experienced sin. It's been with you since the day you were born and will be with you to the day you die. It's just as natural as, as our arms and legs. Sin is part of our existence, but we find here that Christ, he was one that knew no sin, that knew no uh, that, that had no knowledge of it at all in the sense of experiencing. Now, back to our text, the Bible says there, therefore, if any man be in Christ. Now, that's the big question tonight. If you find yourself in Christ or if you do not, uh, uh, bat, some people that promote baptismal regeneration say you're baptized unto Christ. And uh, I do not believe the scriptures teach that. Uh, baptism is simply a testimony, a display of what Christ has done for you in here. Uh, but to put on Christ, <laughs> uh, you're a new creature. Now, that's a work of God and not a work of man. 
You, you, you don't have the ability just simply to say one day, hey, I'm going to put on Christ this morning and I'm going to be something different. There, there, there's no depth, there's no truth to that. So he says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, if you're in that person, he is a new creature. Now, have you ever thought about, you know, and uh, we've all gone through this, always question, you know, have each of us have questioned our, our, our position with Christ, our position with God? Well, were you a new creature? Because he that has put on Christ is a new creature. And if you have nothing to compare that to, to uh, make your calling and election sure. Now, I probably messed up after the Lord saved me, if you want to look at it like that, more so than I did before the Lord saved me. But I do know this, I was a new man in Christ and I, put, I, and I was a new creature, a new beginning for me. And ever since then, I've never been the same. And, and that's something that, uh, that we see that as Paul is writing the, Corinth, the second Corinthian letter, he says, you be sure that this is a portion of you, that you have this in and of yourself. Then he says, continuing in the same verse, old things are passed away. Now we have a, another, a second thing uh, here uh, that is a measure of redemption is no longer interested in what the world has to offer you. Now, let me say for, from first-hand experience, uh, the more you uh, expose yourself to the world, the more you're going to want it. But uh, in the sweet times when you spend alone with Christ, you'll realize how ungodly all that is. How, how, uh, how much it drives you from the person of Christ. And so as Paul is writing here, he gives them uh, really two references uh, to judge within their self. Do they really know the person of the Lord Jesus Christ? Or are, they, are they a new creature and has their old desires passed away? The old man, the old creature, is it gone? And if that's occurred... Huh, good evidence of redemption. Behold, all things are become new. Now, uh, when the Lord saved you, you have a brand new life in Christ. Everything else is gone. Now, what the devil is going to do and what he enjoys doing is bringing up time and time and time again the stuff that you had done previously and then when you let the Lord down in the natural man, he likes to bring that up even more. And, and two ways, the two reasons the devil does that, the first one is to cause you to question your redemption. And the second one, so he can take a, take a, uh, uh, a slap at the person of Christ saying, <laughs> saying that you've sinned again. Uh, you know, uh, I still fully believe today, you remember it says in the, in the days of Job, all, all the sons of men were presenting themselves before God and Satan had to be there too. And um, the Lord God said, have you considered my servant Job? Now you ever wonder possi the possibility that the devil so enjoys our failures that he brings them before Christ? I don't know. Uh, all that is Old Testament, so I can't give you a a, a blemishes, uh, 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 a complete answer on that, but I know he would if it was possible. He, he revels in our sin, both the redeemed and the lost. Verse 18, and meaning after this saved condition, and all things are of God. Now, uh, you remember this, just like this storm tonight. You know what? All that thunder and lightning, all the rain that we've had, the river is rising. All things are of God. The good news, the bad news, the, the thing that makes you want to walk the pew, and the thing that makes you want to never come back to church again, all those things are of God uh, for the redeemed. 
What does the Bible say in Romans chapter 8? All things work together for good to them that love the Lord, for them that are called according to His purpose. Right? All things. So, once we're redeemed, once we've been born again, just remember this, that these events that transpire in our life is for our good. And all things are of God who have reconciled us to himself how? By Jesus Christ. Now, if you're an underliner in your Bible, underline that. Uh, Jared is working on a paper for me. Uh, that's a good scripture to use to our friend down in Paris. It's reconciled by Christ. Not by baptism. Not by works. Not by any of those other uh, false beliefs that are uh, uh, sold today, but here the Bible says very clearly that we are reconciled to God by Christ, by Jesus and Jesus alone, plus nothing, minus nothing, nothing of our good, just what Jesus Christ has done, it reconciles us to God. Now, uh, you've heard this, I'm sure, before, but that reconcile is, uh, also uh, can be, uh, be rendered bought back or, uh, or uh, zeroed out. Uh, you know, when Gomer uh, rebelled against the prophet, he was told to go buy uh, a harlot woman and marry her, and she got to running with men again, and she was gone. She ran her life down, and she was sold at the chopping block, and he went back and got her again. That's the that's being bought back, and that's who that's who we are in Christ. Uh, that is that is the ministry of reconciliation. He reconciled us to God by Himself. He made it right. He reconciled the problem. He evened the equation. He reconciled us to God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 18, uh, the rest of verse 18, and have given us the ministry of reconciliation. Now, uh, be very careful there because the Catholics will teach you, if you're not very careful, that that ministry of reconciliation, Paul was saying, I have it has given us, meaning him and the church, the ministry of reconciliation. No, no, he's saying, what Paul is saying, he, God has given it to us. For the redeemed, for the elect, to the born again, we are reconciled. We belong unto Christ. You know what? You know why people sometimes you feel like you're banging your head against the wall and trying to teach of the things of Christ and they just do not seem to get it? You know what? They don't get it. They don't get it. And if God doesn't intervene, they never will. You know what? Because they've never been reconciled unto Christ. Yeah. They've never been bought back. And, 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 and you know, uh, you know what? Uh, sometimes you feel like you're uh, just shooting to the wind. Well, until God makes it real unto them, that's exactly what it is. But we have no excuse for to continue to go. So don't mess, don't let someone mess you up with that. And given us the ministry of reconciliation, verse 19, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Now that reconciliation, that reconciling ministry was on the cross of Calvary. Uh, had the blood uh, been a partial atonement, it wouldn't have been worth it. Now, uh, other groups, this is Easter. I, I saw a Baptist church, and I use that word uh, really loosely, calling this week Holy Week. You know where that comes from? Right out of the Catholic Church. I don't know about you, but this ain't been no Holy Week for me, has it you? It's been another one. I thought that's going to bang my head against the wall. Uh, the only thing I'm good I can say this year, it's, it's going to hit real close to the 15th of April, which is probably as close as you can get the 14th of, of April, really, to when Christ was resurrected. 
but and, and that's that's kind of one of those things. It's just a, a a guess at best, anyway. But at any rate, we find that because he took sin unto himself, and because he gave himself, that the ministry of reconciliation or that buyback ministry fell onto himself. He accomplished that for us. It, it, it wasn't that his life was ripped from him, but rather he poured it out willingly to fulfill the, uh, the demands of the Father. That is the ministry of reconciliation. Now, notice uh, in the rest of that verse, not imputing their trespasses upon them. In other words, we're, they're not imputed to us anymore. They're not given to us anymore. We don't have the penalty of them anymore. And have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Uh, the word that we're forgiven, the word that we stand under the blood of Jesus Christ, we're reconciled back to God. We have no merit to approach God the Father, Jehovah, except on the merit of his son, Jesus Christ. In fact, I would be very weary uh, to even approach him. If I wasn't under the blood, it would, uh, it, I would be very, uh, well, in fact, being true to his character, he'd probably kill you. Remember, what did he tell Moses? Moses, no man can see God and live, right? That's how holy he is. That's how righteous and good and wonderful the person of the Lord God is. And I think sometimes we forget that because in, in the modern day, they have all this love and God loves everybody. Well, you know, that's real funny because that's not what the Bible teaches at all, is it? Esau have I loved? <laughs> I mean, excuse me, Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated? And some people say, well, that means that he loved him less. Well, that's, uh, I don't know much about translation work, but I know the King James translators did, and that's how, that's how they translated, so it must be pretty close, right? Hated. And, and you, know, uh, you know why he hated Esau? Because he hates sin. It's consistent with his nature. It's consistent with the purity of God for him naturally to hate sin. And, and so uh, he reconciled us through the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ on, on Calvary's cross, pouring out of his own blood and his own self, and then he rose again. <laughs> Verse 20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. And I'll let you check yourself up on that one. Uh, an ambassador is one that goes and bears the news. An ambassador, have you ever seen ambassadors uh, to our country from other nations? They usually wear the typical dress of their own homeland. And that way everybody can pick them out of a crowd. And that's how we are to carry the gospel. We're, we're to possess it. We're to preach it. We're to look at it. And he says, I'm sending you out as ambassadors. Uh, I want you to understand reconciliation, and I want you to tell other people about it. I'm sending you as ambassadors of Christ. And he certainly did that when he told us to go. Uh, when the church was commissioned on the ascension, on the day of the ascension, this uh, Again, Paul is saying, we are his ambassadors. You go for him. And we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech uh, you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled. He wanted them to understand, I'm telling you, be reconciled. Be, be bought back. Be huh under the blood, verse 21. For he have made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Now again, that made him the, the appropriate sacrifice. That made him the, the sinless individual to be offered because he knew no sin. Now, 
You, you think about yourself. Can you remember the first time you sinned? Every one of us would have to say no, right? I was sinning real good before my memory became part of me, right? Uh, lie, lie to your mama, lie to your daddy. Uh, uh, did you do that? No, Judy did it, right? That, that's just the natural uh, impulse of man. So when we say Christ knew no sin, that holiness is something that we cannot hardly get a hold of. We, it fails us to understand because we, all we've ever known is sin. Think about to the day the Lord Jesus Christ saved you. That, that glimpse of glory and, and, and knowing you would never face that sin again and feeling like that all the time. The dreadful cross that our Lord Jesus Christ faced was not, was not his worry. It was the blackness of my sin and the blackness of your sin and all God's elect that would be laid upon him. That was the dread of the cross. Uh, it wasn't dying because, you know, he knew he would raise again. He, he, he knew he would come back. And so the misery of the cross was my, my sin and, and, not, uh, and not the death that went with it. A sinless, 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 totally no knowledge of it, of what sin was. And in a moment's time, the whole sin of every elect that ever would be, he don't him at one time. That, that's, that's impossible for me to, to think. Now, uh, I don't think I am unique when I say this, but I struggle with sin every day. Um, I, I think that is the natural part of mankind. Yeah. It's, you're going to have it, and it's going to be difficult. And at times, I think the older I get, the more difficult it becomes. But just think with me for just a moment that to live in a, in a, a place where sin is not known. You know what the purpose of, uh, of throwing... Uh, Satan and uh, his imps, uh, the false prophets, into the lake of fire is so sin will be will be done away with. Now, my sin was done away with on the cross when the Lord saved me and made me new. Uh, my sin was done away with. If you're saved, yours was too. And so we're not bringing sin into the kingdom. That's why this flesh has to be laid aside. It's because it is sinful. It's, it's defunct. And that's why everybody's sick all the time. Is the, is this, this flesh, flesh is just degenerate all the time. But when that's set aside and we're there, there's no more sin. Uh, the thousand year reign, if I, if I understand it like I think I do, sin reappears. And it has to be that way or, or uh, the world would never be purged, right? And uh, so when we look at sin, when we look at redemption, when we look at sinlessness, it's, it, it's a, a far cry from what I can understand. Now go with me uh, very quickly back to uh, at 16. And while you're turning there, think about your sin. Think about the sins of your lifetime. Think about your sins for the last month, uh, for the last week, for the last year, I mean, excuse me, for the last day, just today. And how you failed him, how you let him down, and uh, that's still sin. Now, we're going to look at the redemption of Lydia. Everybody knows this is one of my favorite uh, accountings of redemption because it's so simple. Now, we'll look at this woman uh, in verse 14, Acts 16, verse 14. The Bible says, And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple. 
Now, the fact that she sold purple uh, did not make her a sinner. What most people suggest, and I don't know, and but I know the prayer, the prayer shawl is real. In the Old Testament covenant, men covered their hair as opposed uh, covered their head as opposed to keeping it uncovered, as the New Testament calls us to do. And this uh, shawl, the, this seller of purple, supposedly was the prayer shawl of the Jewish men, and they would go into the temple and they would pray before the Lord God and they would have a purple stripe down each side, and that, that was the seller of purple. You know what? There was nothing wrong, sinful, necessarily, about Lydia selling those purple garments. Uh, but she was a sinner. Uh, she, uh, she, had, she had a spiritual problem that was very, very deep. Of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God. Now, I'll point out to you, it says God, meaning God the Father, God Jehovah. And what, 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 is, what is the issue with that? She had no reason to approach God at all. Two reasons. One, she did not have a sufficient sacrifice to approach Him. And number two, she was a sinner. She bore her own sins. Wouldn't it be a horrible thing tonight that to think about you're bearing your own sin? If I thought I was bearing my own sin, I couldn't sleep at night. Because I know fully well that huh, very quickly I would be huh, cast out into hell. And Lydia wasn't aware of it either. She, she had no reason. In other words, her worship was false. You, you, you know what? People who worship God and are not part of the redeemed, it's just a mockery. You, you ever think about what sold out is worship in the modern day? Sad, isn't it? Very sad what people call worship. But I want you, I want you to see that Lydia wasn't a bad person. But she did not know Christ. That was the problem. Uh, Lydia wasn't wicked. She wasn't spiritually aware. Uh, you know when you'll become aware of your sinfulness when, when Christ opens you to it. So we find this woman, Lydia, worshipped God not the right way. The rest of that verse says this, heard us. So simplistic, so easy, simply heard the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, whose heart the Lord opened. If you don't have that, you have nothing at all. Her heart was black, it was closed, it was cold, it was shut to the things of God, and he miraculously opened it. On that day, she became part of the ministry of reconciliation. On that day, she became born again. On that day, Lydia was something, she was never quite the same again. You know the rest of this, and we won't get into it tonight. It so moved her that she demanded Paul and Silas to share her home to come in and give them a place to stay. She had no worry about what the Jews might say about that because she, she had seen Christ. She was reconciled. She understood that approaching God now was the only, the only way that she could approach God was not by making purple garments, not making prayer shawls, but the only way to approach Christ is on the merit, I mean, to approach God is on the merit of Christ and she finally understood that. Uh, that is a very, very much a gifted truth. Uh, be certain you have it. And when you have a chance, if you know someone who doesn't know that, show them how to be reconciled. You don't have to use those terms. I think people throw terms around sometimes to make themselves look intelligent. Uh, but just ask them, are you saved? Do you know Christ? 
all you have to do.